Hello, and welcome to another presentation of Weir Collection Wednesday as we explore the Weir Collection at Riverbrink Art Museum. As we move a little closer to the winter season and the early signs of snow and ice begin to make an appearance, I would like to shift our attention to an English-born painter, photographer, and educator, Frederick Marlatt Bellsmith, and his work, Niagara Falls in Winter. This charming painting perfectly captures the atmosphere and the light of a sunny and wintry day at Niagara Falls, where in the 19th and early 20th century, tourists and visitors could venture close to the water, climbing on ice flows and even an ice bridge. Samuel Weir purchased this painting in 1947 at auction and around the same time that he purchased the land where Riverbrink stands. Frederick Marlette Bellsmith, painter, photographer, and educator, was born in 1846 in London, England and he passed away in 1923 in Toronto. Bell Smith exhibited extensively with various scenes depicting everything from awesome landscapes to leisure activities and bustling urban scenes dotted with lights and figures. Although recognized primarily as an artist, Frederick Marlette Bell Smith was a person of wide ranging interests, equally accomplished as a teacher, photographer, actor, raconteur, and writer. In 1866, his parents emigrated to Canada and they settled in Montreal, where he joined them a year later. He was by this time a practicing artist, having studied at the South Kensington Art School with his father. Showing his characteristic resourcefulness and motivation, he worked for a photographic studio and he was a founding member of the Society of Canadian Artists. His first exhibition at the Art Association of Montreal in 1868 featured urban sports and leisure activities. Over the course of the 1870s and 1880s, Bell Smith and his family would live in Hamilton and Toronto, while he expanded his professional endeavors to include teaching at various art groups and leagues, such as the Ladies College in St. Thomas, London Central School, and the Western Art League. Bell Smith had always put great value on sketching trips, which undoubtedly contributed to his success as a freelance illustrator for such publications as the Canadian Illustrated News and for what became Picturesque Canada, the country as it was and is, a comprehensive visualization of architecture, travel, and landscape scenery across Canada, from vast open landscapes to dense urban centers. Bell Smith was a keen traveler throughout his career, partaking in numerous trips throughout Europe and North America. And here we see his work titled, The Changing of the Guard, which was painted later in his career in 1919. This intricate watercolor is an excellent example of his incredible artistic talent for capturing daily life. Working mainly in watercolors, his skills are exemplified in the detail found 
in all of his works from small to large scale. Bell Smith's paintings, whether renditions of natural landscapes or bustling urban scenes, are delicate, refined, and treated with distinct charm regarding composition. In this brief exploration of Bell Smith's work, I'd like to highlight this artist's ability to capture both landscape scenes and scenes with figures, and how his strength in both of these styles culminate in the achievement of a staff favorite, Niagara Falls in Winter, shown here. Let's take a look first here at one of his most stunning landscape works, Mists and Glaciers of the Selkirks from 1911, which bears a few stylistic similarities to Niagara Falls in winter in its restrained white, gray, blue palette and the treatment of billowing mist and depth. In 1887, thanks to the complimentary Canadian Pacific Railway travel passes, from railway official William Cornelius Van Horn. Bell Smith had the opportunity to visit the Rocky Mountains. This was a defining creative moment for the artist as his affinity for the landscape is widely documented. Bell Smith quotes, one of the dreams of my early years was to visit and paint the Rockies about whose magnificence all travelers raved. I dreamed this over and over again until the vision took form in finding myself very early one summer's morning at the Gap, displaying the glint of their glacier accoutrements. They beckoned the enraptured pilgrim to explore their mysteries and their shrines. Over the next three decades, Bell Smith would visit the Rockies at least 11 times and would create mountain landscapes, some of which are titled The Silent Sentinel of the North, Heart of the Selkirks, and An Ice-Crowned Monarch of the Rockies. Bell Smith's propensity for urban scenes. He represented the late 19th century manner of presenting a subject so as to arouse in the viewer the kinds of emotions evoked by narrative fiction. Working mostly in watercolors and oils, he was popular and prolific, usually producing small, easily marketable pictures meant to grace middle-class homes. In 1888, he returned to reside permanently in Toronto and served as principal of the Parkdale Art School until 1890 and eventually the Toronto Art School West End branch. He would become increasingly successful and was able to make a living wholly from painting, which allowed him to produce larger compositions like his 1894 work, Lights of a City Street, shown here, which proved to be one of his most celebrated works. For reference, this work is approximately six and a half by four feet. This crisp, detailed depiction of the corner of King Street and Young Street in Toronto after the rain, captured a moment of urban life with its streetcars, newsboys, policemen, and well-dressed crowds. In its highly contrasted lights and shadows and deep perspective, this painting shows the artist's love of photography, both for its ability to arrest and stop time as well for its value as a means of documentation. 
Returning to Niagara Falls in winter, we see here an affinity for photography and an inclination and nod to his love of depicting leisure scenes. Taken from a vantage point below Niagara Falls, this work could easily be mistaken for an old family photograph of the famous ice bridging that frequently occurred at the base of Niagara Falls. Recognized and known both for his astounding renditions of awesome landscapes and the incredible detail of his bustling leisure scenes and figure groupings, rarely does one see both sides of his skill set in one work, like we do here in Niagara Falls in winter. Now I invite you to take a moment, perhaps pressing pause, and just notice the atmospheric qualities, the mist, the sense of cold through color, the shapes and forms of this big and wondrous landscape and the gestures and nuances of character within the figures themselves. Arms raised and gesturing towards the icy waterfall, bundled to stay warm as they dare to cross the ice. At a technical level, Bell Smith excelled in the painting of atmospheric effects, such as wet pavement after a rain shower, the temperamental and fleeting effects of London skies, the fog, the mists, and the clouds that transform architecture or mountains into flat shapes of many hues of blue or gray, which he would observe with unending fascination. Bell Smith's works are often titled with some notion of the atmospheric conditions captured within the work whether it be cloud effects, hazy days, or morning mists. These titles are rendered unnecessary once you set your gaze upon the work and appreciate how nature's effects can be conveyed so evocatively. At a cultural and historical level, Bell Smith's work encapsulates the late 19th and early 20th century period of Canadian history and art history, which is marked by moments of transition and of new and old traditions. Bell Smith is undoubtedly a traditionalist at heart, and he knows that honoring these traditions, especially within the Canadian cultural and physical landscape, help to form a clear national identity in art. Thank you for joining me today, and please watch for our next presentation of Weir Collection Wednesday.